Brethren, if anyone among you wonders from the truth and someone turns him back, the impact of prayer to recover a wandering brother or sister. See, James here, he is focusing his attention on the household of faith. So he's talking to those in the household of faith, and he says, brethren, if one of you wonders from the faith, and the term here for wondering, it describes a planet that has flipped out of orbit. A planet out of orbit. It's not in its normal orbit. And that is the term that James used to describe a Christian, a brother or a sister, who has departed from their faith. They're like a planet that's out of orbit. So James says, as the family of God, then we have a responsibility to try to reclaim our brothers and sisters who are out of orbit. Their lives are out of orbit. Their lives are no longer centered around the Lord Jesus Christ and around his word and around prayer and around fellowship and around the company of the household of faith. Their lives are out of orbit. James says it's important that we understand it is the impact of prayer to reach out to these wandering brothers and sisters and to bring them back into their orbit. If anyone among you wonders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sin. The impact of prayer is to recover a wandering brother or sister, to turn a sinner from the error of his way, to save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So what is James describing here? He's describing here's what can happen to someone who strays from the truth of the Bible, of the Word of God, of what they know to be right, they can become like a planet that is out of orbit. If they continue in that orbit that they're in, if they're continuing to stray away from the truth, they're going to find themselves in a whole host of problems. They're going to commit sins. They're going to have calamity. Their lives are going to start to fall apart. James says that's what will happen. But if we're able to reclaim them and to restore such a one, that we may be able to keep them from committing certain sins that will bring certain consequences and certain destruction to their lives and to the lives of people that are around them. And James is saying we may very well save their life or save someone else's life. People don't know how close they are to death. James, John, uh, David said there's only one step, 18 inches between me and death, David said. We don't know how close we are to death. We don't know how close the people that we are connected to, how close they are to death. And that's why James says we're to take this ministry of prayer seriously because it is our prayer that God might use to turn people's lives around and get them anchored on the rock of Jesus Christ and restore them back to usefulness to God. God has a plan for each and every person. And God has a specific plan for every person who's ever named the name of Christ. God has a script that is written for our lives. There's a plan, there is a destiny that God has for us. But when we step outside of God's will, then we become a wandering orbit that is out of control. Prayer, my beloved brothers and sisters, it is the spiritual weapon that God has given us in our arsenal to pull down strongholds and to bring deliverance in the lives of people who find themselves held hostage by Satan and by sin and by the clutches of darkness. So James says, let us pray. Now, if you were to ask people to do something complicated, they would probably say, well, I might try it. But God asks us to do just simple stuff, things that we can do. He's not asking us to do the impossible. God is not asking us to go out, stand on the 35th Street Bridge, jump off the bridge, and see if you can survive the fall and the impact in the water. Then I will show up and help you. 
God is not asking us to do something that is impossible. He's asking us to do the possible. Humble yourself under my mighty hand. Turn your face toward me. Cry out to me and see if I won't hear your cry. Give you my attention. Activate your, my power in your life. If you need for God to do something for you, then now is the time for you to be resolute and for me to be resolute and to turn toward him and say, Lord, we need your help. Lord, I need your help. What the old folk used to say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mama, not my daddy, not my brothers or my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. If we will stand in the need of prayer, stand in the presence of God and ask God to rend the heavens and come down and help us. God can, and I believe that God will, because he delights in doing the impossible.